We were told by the government that MKUltra stopped decades ago. But this content will prove not only that it is alive and well, but its offshoots are still covertly performing experimentation on Americans, but now they're on steroids and with a mission. This took nearly a month of research, and my hopes are that the info can help bring awareness to many and a warning to expose what could be the beast's plans to control and deceive millions, if not billions. This is extensive. I do hope you're able to take the time to get through it. Love you guys. God bless. Hello, YouTube family. It's me, Miss Dana Ashley. Coming at you today with a video that is going into a perspective regarding these mass shootings that I'm not really seeing anyone else talk about. One thing that I wanted to mention right off the bat is the danger of so many people that call themselves truthers immediately jumping to a conclusion of calling things a hoax. I'm beginning to think that at this point, um, that's even a part of the plan. Because by the time you see stuff on mainstream media calling out the hoax and vilifying all people who question anything into the category of these tinfoil hat conspiracy nutters, you know that it's, it's a part of the plan. Tonight on social media, right-wing conspiracy theories going viral. The unsubstantiated claims say he's a crisis actor. Every shooting, there's some sort of conspiracy theory about how it was someone else, and it was staged, and it was this, and it was that. I mean, at the highest levels, they have lost their minds. There are always crackpots in situations like this who come out of the woodwork. The far right wing thrives on conspiracy theories. I have some bad news for you. You're crazy. You're a crazy person. Your brain is not... When we know the beast's plans for America, the whore of Babylon, these divisive measures by the media make perfect sense. Many unbelievers may not realize Yeshua warned us about this, as well as the sign of these days long, long ago. In Luke, he said, they will be divided father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother. Wow, have you ever known this to be more true in America than now? What is coming next is the inability to even express an opinion or question the main narrative at all. What else has been happening as these kids buried their friends, some sick conspiracy theories have been cropping up. We can't continue to allow American discourse to be driven by a few voices who speak the most loudly. If you aren't crazy, which most of you aren't, you can't just sit there and let these scumbags spread these lies about these kids. Free speech hanging on by a thread. Questioning the main narrative is about to be the equivalent to having the bubonic plague in 1350. Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter all condemn the conspiracy content, adding they're removing videos and images that violate their policies. Now they can more openly censor Americans and vilify anyone who questions the official narrative because anyone who does so will now be lumped in with those who weren't doing real investigation of false flags but just yelling hoax which gives the other people around us permission to essentially hate us and want us destroyed. <laughs> What's that? Oh. This is Rashko. He's beautiful. Ow! You gotta get down, dude. All right, so please, let's not jump into any conclusions about something being a hoax. I personally came across a lot of people calling the Vegas shootings a hoax. And just to differentiate, you understand a hoax means it didn't happen. There's no blood. And then a false flag means it happened, but a different person actually did it than what the mainstream narrative is saying. I know someone who was shot in the face in Vegas, and then I proceeded to look at video after video popping up in my suggestions feeds of people calling it a hoax and I think you know this is a problem and it's there for a reason and it is more of the divide and conquer than it is pertaining to truth at all. Now in the case of Nick Cruz he actually admitted to carrying out the shootings so for now we won't go into other conflicting information about who did it I unlocked my door and the kids just started pouring in my room. I was pulling them and then shouting at them to get in the room. And then I suddenly saw the shooter about 20 feet from me, standing at the end of the hallway, actively shooting down the hallway, just a barrage of bullets. And I'm staring at him thinking, why is the police here? This is strange because he's in full metal garb, helmet, face mask, bulletproof armor, shooting this 
rifle that I've never seen before. Everybody started running to the other exit, but that's when the shooter, the other shooter started coming up. That's when the other shooter started coming up? Interesting. And then I thank God to this teacher who opened up her door and let all of us in. I assume that it's a code red drill because they told us earlier in the day that we're going to be having a code red drill. I assumed it was blanks. In the moment, I wasn't because there was obviously definitely another shooter involved. Well, you think he was not the only one? No, definitely not. Because when shots were fired, I saw him after the fact. And the shots were coming from the other part of the building. So there definitely had to be two shooters involved, I believe. Since Nick Cruz did admit to carrying out the shootings, we will assume that he at least partook in them to some degree. What he said in the initial reports of the investigators who spoke with him was completely glossed over after the first day. Which, by the way, this is very common. Um, I was in the South whenever Timothy McVeigh if you will recall, the Oklahoma City bombing that happened with the truck bomb in front of the Murrow building as a federal building in Oklahoma City. And you remember, Timothy McVeigh was blamed for driving that truck up and for being responsible for that. But if you would have lived in Oklahoma City that day and you would have watched the local newscasts, they all reported that, in fact, there was another bomb in that building that did not detonate. Police and uh, emergency crews are talking about moving us back because of the danger of a possibility of another explosion. I think he said another bomb. Another bomb, move back. Oh my God, another bomb. They will use that, uh, that trailer. You see the, the bucket on the back there, sort of this is how they would transport the explosive device away from this populated area to try to do something with it. A second bomb was found on the east side of that building. A bomb squad is on the scene. That second bomb has not exploded. We don't know quite the status yet if they've managed to defuse it. There have been reports of two explosive devices, unexploded explosive devices. Two different explosive devices were found. First bomb that was in the federal building did go off. It did the damage that you see right there. The second explosive was found and diffused. The local media were doing a, a good job the first day. Local law enforcement also, I believe, was doing a good job. But once the feds came in, things started changing. Well, initially that morning, all the media that was downtown there reporting were reporting the truth. They reported the truth about the unexploded bombs, undetonated bombs being removed from the building. By afternoon, Things began to ease a little bit. You could sense a difference, and by the next day. A massive car bomb exploded outside of a large federal building in downtown Oklahoma City, shattering that building, killing children, killing federal employees, military men, and civilians. Authorities now believe the truck that bore the bomb was parked in a space alongside the federal building. The FBI said today it was a huge explosion and that the explosive used was most likely a simple combination of fertilizer and fuel oil. If you look at the initial report, sometimes you'll see other eyewitnesses come forward with information or you'll get bits of information about what really happened that they will not carry on with in, in the narrative later on. So let's go into what happened at the beginning. There were several investigators right after apprehending him that came out and said that Nick told them that he heard voices in his head telling him exactly how to carry this out. Sources tell ABC News the 19-year-old gunman told investigators he heard voices in his head directing him to conduct the attack. Now, the timing of the shooting was very interesting in that I had just released a different video that had an ex-military scientist talking about this very same voice-to-skull technology. So the military can now put voices into people's heads. <clears throat> you can make people do things. And that's very easy. I could do it. I could do it to you in less than three days. So like, such as assassins? I could turn you into an assassin in less than three days. So this led me to dig deeper. I first wanted to confirm, without a doubt, was this voice-to-skull technology real? And if so, how did it work? I soon learned that if the average American took the time to look at documents via the Freedom of Information Act in the Library of Congress and Patent Office, they would be horrified at what is openly and admittedly being tested, tried, and written about in their very own country and on their very own fellow Americans. 
Dr. Joseph Sharp and Ellen Fry experimented with microwaves seeking to transmit spoken words directly into the audio cortex. Dr. Fry, a biophysicist at GE's Advanced Electronics Center, Cornell University, and a contractor for the Office of Naval Research, discovered in 1958 that the auditory system responds to electromagnetic energy and appeared to originate from within or near the back of the head. Fry's work in this field gave rise to the so-called Fry effect, which is now more commonly referred to as microwave hearing. In ordinary uh, sound perception, sound that goes into the uh, ear canal gets amplified by the small bones in the middle ear and then gets to the inner ear where the cochlea resides and in the cochlea is converted to electrical impulse. Two, three, two. But in the case of a microwave auditory effect, is the source is electromagnetic. So if you expose the biological tissue to a pulse of uh, microwave energy, the tissue expands and induces a vibration. Instead of going through the middle ear, the microwave-induced vibration gets propagated to the inner ear directly. Renowned author and speaker Nick Begich cites more than 30 patents that show mind control is possible. Begich used this infrasound device to demonstrate on me. I can hear it when you press it to my skin, but not when you take it off. Right, and so it's almost like it's right in the center of your head. And you can do that even if it, you weren't touching my skin? Not with this device, but if I were using a microwave carrier at a distance, we could achieve the same thing. And something that I worked on and I'm not proud of, but uh, it's called the Voice of God weapon. There are four different technologies that can pipe voices into an individual's head. You're rewiring their thought processes and brains. There are scientists that have come forth high up within the ranks of this research who have said, we've already used this. We use this to get them to drop their weapons by saying, drop your weapons this is Allah. They used it, I believe, in the Gulf War to tell the enemy at that time, lay down your guns, this is Allah. And it worked pretty well because hearing voices which have no direction or sound, you have to assume that it's some spiritual entity. Uh, so it works pretty well. And so when I aim it towards you, what you hear is made right next to your ears. So again, this idea of being able to put sound anywhere you want to is really starting to catch on. Uh, we've got the military had just deployed some of these into Iraq where you can put fake troop movements a quarter of a mile away on a hillside. <laughs> or you can whisper in the ear of a supposed terrorist some biblical verse. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> We make a version of this which puts out 155 decibels. Pain is 120. So it allows you to go nearly a mile away and communicate with people. And there can be a public beach just off to the side and they don't even know it's turned on. We sell those to the military presently for about $70,000. And they're buying them as fast as we can make them. Well, you have to understand what's happening. Military industrial complex, they kind of figured out if you just go to a country and you blow the country to pieces, then you got to go in there and you have to rebuild everything you destroyed. They said there's got to be a better way to do this so that we can just go in there and we can just defeat the minds of the individuals, keep them from fighting us, and we don't have to destroy the infrastructure. We don't blow anything up anymore. We just go in there, turn these machines on, and force these people that would normally oppose us to be so sick that they just can't get up and do that. To make everybody so ill that they can't get out of bed and make a war. And so this is the future of warfare. Wow. Okay. So the technology exists. But... Could it actually be being used on people like Nick Cruz to encourage these shootings? We need to take note of how many other previous mass shooters have made similar claims about hearing voices and dig a little deeper to see, have there been other mass shooters who have complained of the same issue? The answer is a resounding yes. 
Now coincide this with the fact that most of you probably know Richie from Boston. His channel was taken down recently for a bit and it had to do with his video regarding what? Targeted individuals. Targeted individuals represent an umbrella name for people who are victims of these multiple forms of harassment, whether it be voice to skull or actual microwave weapons that are coming into the home. YouTuber Richie from Boston also had previously come out and shared that he had been attacked with these microwave weapons. I never talk about it because I never wanted to give the people the satisfaction to know that their techniques or whatever they were doing were working. But what was happening to me is in the middle of the night at the exact same time, every time I would wake up and my entire body would be vibrating like there was electricity going through it. My heart would be racing and certain other times my skin would become hot to the touch like somebody was holding a magnifying glass on it under the sun. That's electronic harassment. That is telling you to shut up. Now if any of you think that these microwave weapons are just fantasy, you should see what the army just put up not too long ago regarding these very weapons. Marines and several other DOD representatives had quite the heated demonstration at Quantico, Virginia from the Joint Non-Lethal Weapons Directorate. This is a military area. Move away from the perimeter. I say again, this is a military area. Move away from the perimeter. Their new active denial system boasts a reach far beyond any other non-lethal system. About seven football fields to give it some perspective. As you can see here, a demonstration of its effects. You have grown men told to be aggressive and move forward while holding large weapon-like objects. Throw them down and run away like little kids. This active denial system is proof of one form of silent, invisible microwave weapon technology. It is fully operational and already in use today. It can be targeted to an individual person or blanketing an entire area. They're bragging about it. They're bragging about it for crowd control dispersion, but what is stopping them? from using it covertly on Americans right now? Apparently nothing. While the technology to cast voices into people's heads has been around since the 50s, the ability to cast voices into a particular person's head anywhere, anytime in the world is a newer technology. Electronic surveillance weapon specialist Roger Tulsis explains how. What they do is they go and get your garbage in front of your house and get your DNA and then once they've got your DNA sequence, they can, can then go to a supercomputer and they can biocode directed energy attacks that will only go and bioresonate with your body. So that three people can be standing right next to you and nobody's going to feel the harassment except you because these signals are biocoded to your body's tuning only. Now imagine if you had these types of weapons assaulting you in your own home, preventing sleep, causing extreme pain and unwanted negative emotions. Okay, I'm going to show you family. Look. High radiation detected. See, it keeps going in and out as I move it. On this wall right here by my bed. This is my bed. This is my bed, and this is where I receive the most of my attacks. It says, high radiation detected. As I move away, it's picking up levels in here. The phone is pointing outside the window. Nothing, no, no reading from outside. And when you go up against this wall, boom very high levels of radiation. Now accompany that by public gang stalking as well as actual voices telling you awful things in your own head. Sadly this is not a fictitious Hollywood movie plot. This is happening to some say tens or even hundreds of thousands of Americans right now. Surprisingly, ex-President Obama established holding an annual open committee of bioethics. Here is what one doctor who spoke there had to say about the reality of the situation. MK Ultra radiation experiments mostly were done without informed consent. They were funded by the DOD and intelligence agencies in the community. We are seeing an alarming rate of complaints of use of electromagnetic weapons, uh, microwave auditory effects, silent sound spectrum, EEG cloning, which has taken the lab out of the laboratory and into the home. Most of these, from the research that we reviewed, can be done remotely. Uh, it seems to be more weapons research than medical research. I personally corresponded with upwards of 1,500 victims all complaining of identical complaints from every state in the nation of being exposed to electromagnetic radiation for the use of cognitive control or behavior control. Thank you. When it comes to thinking of Nick Cruz, I mean, if he actually heard these voices in his head telling him how to do it, you know, 
I would think, well, gosh, just because I heard something in my head, it doesn't mean I would go through with it. But you have to understand the deep levels of torture that many of these victims are having. It's hard to know what these people hear because no one else can hear it. No one can record this. So to find out the kind of things that were said to them, I did find this man named Tivon Rivers. He's a cryptologic technician. He had high security clearance in the military before he became a victim of this harassment program. Um, he since has been very outspoken about their methodology. Since he moved to a remote location in another country to deter their attacks, he specifically suffered with the voice to skull. Here's what he had to say about the kinds of things that they would say into his head. It's the shock and awe of this, of this weapons platform. When you're hit with it, you're trying to figure out what the heck is going on with me. And there you are, you're, you're tracked 24 seven. Now that we've defined what V2K is, can you describe your experience with it? These signals, when it hits the skull, the apparition of our voices. So someone's on the other end speaking a string of sentences that only you, the target, can hear. What kinds of things do they say? For lack of a better word, uh, quite frankly, demonic. And I think, by the way, these scripts vary. Mm -hmm. They vary from person to person. I believe these scripts are to, to destroy the person on all levels so that they have a mental breakdown. So for me, um, the intelligence would be the following sentences. Uh, you're a spy, you are a traitor, someone needs to kill you and take you out. Or sometimes they'll say in the third person, someone needs to take this person out. I think a lot of people who are experiencing V2K, by the way, are threatened regularly with their lives about each day they're going to be dead. Yeah. Or they're going to die in their sleep. I found dozens and dozens of YouTubers who have been suddenly diagnosed with schizophrenia, but whose forms of symptoms perfectly match the torture programs of psychotronic weaponry that targeted individuals describe. They detail the voice to skull, with the voices often telling them that they should fear for their lives or hurt others. They describe having their thoughts read through these EEG weapons. As well, they describe the painful effects of microwave weaponry to their bodies. There is no telling how many are walking around with a false diagnosis of schizophrenia, but who are actually targeted. In some cases, the controller seemed to want them to stay on their meds. Could this be medical research as well? Some estimate each target generates millions of dollars of research money. I'm, I'm scared. My voices keep telling me that everyone's going to kill me. They keep saying how oh, my mom's going to kill me. <laughs> they keep saying how oh, everyone is going to kill me. Everyone's going to kill me. Everyone's going to kill me. I don't feel safe. I'm... My mom is supposed to come right now, but they say when she gets here, she's going to stab me. She's not going to stab me. Shut up. You're not right. I don't know what to do. I don't know if I should, like, go to the park, get out of the house, because they said I'm not safe here. I don't want to do this anymore, man. It's horrible. Please stop saying that. You're telling me to go get the knife. Get the knife. Oh. Yeah? What? Where are you? I'm in my closet. What are you doing in your closet? <sighs> Guys, the more I learned about this program, the more my heart ached for those who are having to deal with it. I found a number of documents that seem to be leaked PowerPoint slides from this TI program. There are ways here listed how to discredit a target or a target's company. You see things like write a blog purporting to be one of their victims. Many of the targets are complaining about having their character assassinated so that they can no longer work. Another ex-agent admitted to putting child porn onto a target's computer. Really evil stuff, guys. And check this out. There was actually this pyramid that established the basic needs of a self-actualized person. It starts at the bottom with physiological needs, then safety needs, then belongingness and love needs, and then self-esteem needs. So it goes from basic to psychological needs. These are the very things that are destroyed with this program.
in order to break a person. I mean, just really, really sick. You might be saying, but with so many involved, why wouldn't someone come out and expose it? To that I'd say, the people who are deeply involved in this do not want to have the tables turned and become targeted themselves. Which is exactly what happened to this whistleblower who worked in the TI system for years before his conscience caused him to speak out. So everything that's done by this program is meant to have a psychological effect so that they are brought to a place in their life where they're isolated, they're broke, they're unemployed, they have no family, they have no friends, and nobody in the general public can track or trace anything that's being done to them because the technology is remote and it's wireless and there's usually no physical signs left on the individual that anything is being done to them. They are specifically instructed, you know, do not slash anyone's tires. Don't vandalize their house. That is not the point of the program. The point of the program is to have maximum psychological effect and leave the minimal amount of evidence. When I decided to blow the whistle and this technology was turned against me, a massive organized stalking effort uh, was launched against me. And due to my training, I recognize the tactics that are used. Well, what sort of things are you getting, V2K? What kind of things are uh, they telling you? Uh, the main one that they repeat all the time is be quiet or we're going to kill you. The stuff to try to turn people against each other. They're trying to turn me against former employers, people I used to work with, family members, friends, people I'm meeting online. And it's just a constant 24-7 back and forth. Don't trust this person. Do trust that person. Don't you dare try to work again or we're going to kill you. Don't you dare try to contact this person or we're going to kill you. And so you can start to see how psychologically this is going to have an effect on someone very, very quickly. This is Aaron Alexis armed with a sawed-off shotgun. Now that you know the details of this program and what these targeted individuals go through, I'd like to take a little deeper look at these shooters. And today, the first official explanation of why. Was a mentally unstable individual. This shotgun is the primary murder weapon. On it, he etched a number of carvings, which I believe forced the media to have to cover his claims of being targeted. Including, end to the torment, better off this way. And he also wrote, my ELF weapon, ELF standing for extremely low frequencies. These are the types of frequencies that are being sadistically used against targeted individuals. Alexis had been hearing voices and believed he was being bombarded by microwaves. Alexis told police he believed that there were two men and a woman and that they were, quote, using a microwave machine to send vibrations through the ceiling, penetrating his body so he could not sleep, unquote. And he told police that he never felt anything like this, that he had no history of mental illness in his family. He felt the individuals would harm him. The attack came without warning, as seen on this airport surveillance video coming into view from the left, 26-year-old Esteban Santiago pulls out his pistol and opens fire. He killed five people. Now the question is why Santiago even had a gun, which had been taken away last November when he showed up at the FBI office in Alaska to claim he was hearing voices and was hospitalized for a mental examination. The gun was taken away from him, but it was is given back after he was uh, cleared. Attorney Myron May's case was one that was particularly heartbreaking to me as everyone who knew him personally confirmed his compassion, kindness, and sensitivity. To you, sweet young man. Not only did he send out 10 certified mail packages to major media outlets like Associated Press detailing the TI program and his affidavit of being tortured, he also released a three-part YouTube video series stating similar info and telling his family members and friends goodbye. And the biggest reason why I'm doing this is that for me, I'm already here. I'm already a targeted individual. I've already been subjected to torture. But if this program can stop, then maybe, just maybe, other people won't have to be tortured psychologically and, and physically and financially and emotionally. Maybe. Although brandishing a gun and shooting it a few times, he didn't actually kill anyone in the event at his alma mater library, FSU, before being shot himself about 30 times. But his case brought up a detail that I wonder if every TI who acts out these shootings hears as well from these voices that taunt them. He was told by his voices if he would act out this shooting as per their demands, he would effectively be removed from the torturous program. Here's the Facebook post of his on a targeted individual page asking if anyone else had been promised freedom with the killing.
Certainly, this is not to say that every single mass shooter or murderer is a TI victim, nor that every violent person who says they have heard voices are TIs. This life is a spiritual war, and demonic possession is also real, striving to destroy lives in every way. The glorification of violence in our media and through desensitizing and graphic first shooter video games played by anyone, much less young kids, certainly has not helped matters. That said, the high percentage of mass shooters that seem to potentially be victims of this mind control experiment is reason enough to dig deeper and demand that our leaders look into this voice of God weaponry and targeted individual military experiment much more seriously. When you dig into this, it's Pandora's box. There is just incident after incident of people being described as previously normal with sudden onset voices in their heads, which is not, by the way, how schizophrenia works. Schizophrenia is a more gradual process and typically people who were described as never quite right to begin with. But to give you an idea of the scope of this, I'll list some of the examples that I've come across that could potentially be TI victims. By the way, this is not to justify these actions. What they did was wrong, but if they were targeted and therefore tortured, then the people who did that to them were, in my opinion, just as guilty as those who carried out these atrocities. The victims and their families of these people have more of a reason than anyone to look to get to the bottom of this evil TI program. Here are some of them that I found. Prior to the shooting killing 12 in New York, Jiverly Wong sent a letter to 10 Now Local News and the letter stated in broken English that the police had been terrorizing him for approximately 18 consecutive years as they followed him from California to New York. The methods of torture he described in the letter were casebook TI, 24-hour surveillance, character assassination, breaking and entering into his home, and deep sickness from microwave weapons and V2K that included putting constant music into his head. Gavin Long released YouTube videos where he openly discussed being a targeted individual. He killed three police officers he apparently thought to be involved with his harassment. Tamerlan Sarnev is one of the brothers suspected of the Boston bombing, had also heard voices in his head before committing the attack. In fact, he used the term majestic mind control to describe the phenomenon according to a background story published by the Boston Globe. Tamerlan also told friends that the voices were ordering him to do things. As he got older, the voice became more authoritative and its bidding more insistent. Miriam Carey drove her car through a White House barrier before she was shot to death by security in front of her baby girl. Oh. Miriam Lee openly stated several times in her case it was Obama's voice in her head making demands of her, thus her trip to the White House. Considering it now only takes a small sample of someone's voice to create a sample audio track able to say anything, this is certainly feasible with the same voice to skull technology. Sister of Scott Olstrom said, My brother is not this monster. He's not cold-blooded. He hears these voices. Honestly, in my heart, I believe there's only so much a person can take. Truth be told, we will never know how many shooters have been driven to kill with this program. But knowing it exists can help us understand how to detect those who may be caught in it and should encourage all of us to be praying against its effectiveness. Yeah, it's scary that mass shooters would be instigated to do these sorts of things, to initiate all these other divisions in our country that they're trying to do. However, What's worse to me is that this group of targeted individuals in our country right now, this is research, okay? This is not the end goal. This research to see what it takes to make people break is being culminated just like a hacker gets together his hacks and organizes what works, what tools work to break the system. They're organizing what tools and methodologies work to break us. We should expect nothing less from the beast. Jesus' own words warned us of this. You should count on the tricks of the New World Order beast to use this weaponry to try and stop us from calling out to him and to stop us from refusing the mark of the beast. And my mind began to torment me and almost became literally blanked out. My stomach began to shout out loud, Jesus, please help me, I'm afraid. But the message couldn't get out because my mind was paralyzed and I could not process my thoughts whatsoever. We know that a false flag 
of gargantuan proportions is coming that will instigate the entire world to take the mark of the beast. Many of us already understand they're probably going to use a fake alien invasion to do this very thing. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. Now imagine if amongst the blue beam technology where you're seeing entire ecosystem of an alien spaceship coming down and then they start beaming into your head they're coming in peace they just need you to cooperate and we're all gonna get along fine I mean you can only imagine we don't know what they're going to do but I do know that this isn't the end game this is the research so this video is not to promote fear in the least. It is to create an awareness around the tactics of the beast so that we all are not fooled by these tactics when they come our way in the future. One of the things that I noticed when I'm studying all these targeted individuals, one thing that I saw again and again was that people turn to prayer. People turn to prayer to reach out and to build a more intimate relationship with God to get them through. And I see in the comment section over and over and over, that is the only thing that worked for many people. And I protect myself from it with the full armor of God. Hit your knees and pray like you've never prayed before. It worked for me. I hope that this information helped create awareness around this dynamic so that you can pray for those who are being targets. Put a hedge of protection around the people who are suffering from this. No weapon used against us shall prosper so that none of these techniques will have any effect on those of us who are walking with him. All right, you guys. God bless you. I love you all. Hope you're having a great day. Bye-bye. Yo, dude. Ah, Roscoe. You got to get away from there. Come on now. Come here, dude. Come here. You're uh, <laughs> you're such a ham. Come All right. Cattail coming through. All claims of hearing voices in their head and being. Here's a list. Here's a list. Here's at least a here's a partial list of people who here's a part. <laughs> 